she's not with you for you. She's with you because of some achievement, some. Okay. What is into you for you? What is that? That's a, that, that by the, by the way, that whole thing, oh, she's, she's not into you for you. Okay. What does that look like? I want you to want me. Well, okay. But why does she want you in the first place? Women marry a lifestyle. They don't marry the guy. You know, they're not into you for you. Maybe they get to that point. But when, when they're, when you are coming together with that woman, when you, when you're meeting that girl, when you're Superman, it's what you are, not who you are. Hopefully it will be. But for the for the time being, against the, the you know we talk about the the transactional versus validational sex. This is a guy who's never had validational sex. It's always been about a transaction. Tangible event that you did some some hype that you got, and she, you shouldn't be worthy or you should be fulfilled of anything else but that one event. You notice how he keeps using the term fulfilled. Who else uses that? <laughs> what guy do you know that uses fulfilled? Well, I have two answers for that. First, so you said she shouldn't be with you for something. She should be with you because you are something. Well, how do you become something? You well, become that's, something. That's what you, you become. Wait. You become something by doing things. So you, you're trying to separate the two as if they're separate. They're it, not you, separate. 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 They're, they're you not. is a lot of things. Your, your achievements is a small thing. Being not, successful not, isn't. Hold on, not in the realm of a man. In the realm of a man, oh. your achievements are 85% of all of who you are. As a man, you are judged solely on your status. You don't even have to be good looking. You need to be important. And you're only going to be important by achieving important things. As a man, you are only an you're only judged on your importance and your status. And also another point I want to make, you made it sound like if I lose that next battle, she's going to run away. Well, no, not completely. But I will counter that by not saying completely. No, no, but I'll, I will because, answer. I mean, now she's attacks you because you're a failure. She's attacks you on whatever you do because now you're not as good as you were before. So she's losing that part of success that you had. She's not, now she should tax you too much. Yeah, you, she say, Andrew, give me 10 bucks a day, bro. So you have to you, you have to go like a wagey to the market and sell peaches, right? Because you don't fulfill her now anymore. She lost something, bro. Get taxed, pussy. So his primary goal in life is to fulfill the woman because that's what's going to keep her loyal. I'm going to, uh, yeah, no, there's never any def definitive, you know, how, how do I objective way to fulfill? How do I feel this woman's because to him, fulfilling her is just doting over her every need, putting her first in your mind, making her your mental point of origin. That's how you fulfill her. It's this never ending, like tail chasing of trying to find some way to make this bitch happy. Like to, to quote Chris Rock, I'll make this bitch happy. You could fuck her with a diamond dick and it won't matter because you, you, there's going to be some, that's too hard. <laughs> you know, it's a, there's something that's not going to make her happy, right? So you have this endless, like a man's purpose in his mind. And by the way, not just him, but in a lot of guys who have been conditioned, blue pill conditioned to make women their mental point of origin, they're, they think exactly like this. Well, you got to fulfill you. You're not doing your job. It's like when that chick cheats on you, it's your fault. You could do everything right and she still teach and she still, you know, you could fulfill her every need and she still cheats on you. It's on you. It's, and, and how, what a great fucking social convention that is. You want to know why women are sinless and blameless? It's not because women think that way. It's because guys like this, that's the thought. That's the, it's the, it's the, 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 the first thought that comes into their heads because he can't explain it any other way. That's why fulfillment keeps coming back over and over and over again. And yes, you're right, uh, Will Smith, most definitely. He has Will Smith, it, Will Smith and like uh, uh, Prince Harry, man, they live to try to fulfill those women and they never, never will. You will never, because first of all, human beings aren't meant to be content in the first place. We're, we're discontent like defines humanity. That's number one. And the other thing is, is there is nothing worse than a woman who is attached for life to a guy with this mentality. Instead of going forward, instead of think, putting himself first, instead of like making himself his mental point of origin and following you, one of the most ambitious guys you know will seem like the most arrogant and selfish. The guys who have the most passion and the most drive and the most straightforward direction, the guy we hear about it all the time. You got don't chase, don't chase women, chase excellence. The guy who is consistently chasing excellence, that guy is always going to come off as arrogant, selfish, like a selfish prick. He's going to look like Andrew, Andrew, right? He's going to seem like he's conceited. That is a necessary element for attraction. That's you want to say, well, that's dark triad. Yeah, no, I, I think right now we need to stop calling dark triad dark. Okay? Those are elements of personality that are useful 
especially in this day and age, they always have been. I mean, you follow, you read uh, what the the qualities of the print, quality of prints, qualities of the prints, the prints by uh yes lord ned you will refer that's his a uh, lord ned is ned's uh, preferred pronouns thank you very much but the the idea that that you know i'm not saying like oh you need to be the psychopathic guy or you need to be like and there's and here's your here's your next uh thumbnail uh okay there you go and use that one next time you want to come at me but that idea that psychopathy is necessarily a bad thing. I mean, in measured doses, sometimes psychopathy is necessary for you to win a fight and survive and live. Okay. Machiavellianism, right? Really all that is, is just a controlled version of uh, enlightened self-interest. If you, I mean, maybe, maybe it's an uncontrolled version. I don't know. Narcissism, right? Self, where, where does narcissism begin and self-importance end? Where, where did the, what's, what's the threshold between those two? What's, what's a healthy sense of self pro, of being pride of, proud of yourself versus I love myself. Like what, what, where does the narcissism begin and where does self-importance putting yourself first, uh, mental point of origin, whatever it is that you want, uh, where does that, wh wh what's the dividing line between those two? Because clearly women are attracted to dark triad traits. And the, the, the reason we keep calling them dark triad is because 80 percenters, just like this guy XQC, it's in their best interest to demonize those things. Because that will, because if they don't, it destroys their identity. If you say, well, you know what? Dark triad uh, personality traits, and I don't mean in the most extreme, uh, you don't have to be some psychopathic killer or whatever, and some neurotic guy. I'm just saying in measured doses, in, in to some degree, everybody has dark triad personality traits. It's just what do we do with those things, right? Well, if those things are no longer dark and they are useful personality traits, what happens is it destroys the ego and it destroys the identity of guys like this who built their entire lives around their belief set that is all about making her fulfilling her needs and making her first, right? That's why he's so offensive. You want to know why he gets all really kind of huffy and uh, like goes up, you know, goes up his neck. I mean, I, I'm going to fast forward it here because we've got to get to the, the violence part real quick. But that reason for that is because it challenges his identity because a guy, the, just the very existence of an Andrew Tate or a Rolla Tomasi or a Myron Gaines or whoever, Name your, name your guy, name your red pill guy. The very existence of those guys is a challenge to the identity of guys who are still stuck in the matrix or still blue pill. It, it challenges the, it's like telling your, it's like telling your, uh, uh, telling somebody's parents, you're raising your kid or you raised your kid wrong. You were brought up wrong. The way you think is wrong. Who you are is wrong because I exist. And the proof is in the pudding. I got lots of chicks that want to bang me. I'm, I'm, I'm got more money than God. And the, and look where I'm at. Well, that's not what you should do. Okay. Well, that's a judgment call. That's a belief. Now you're now you're pushing things over into ideology, good versus evil. Okay. Well, you're evil, but I'm successful. So am I not? Am I evil because I'm successful, or am I successful because I'm evil? <laughs> I mean, you can you can make a judgment call out of anything. But what the, the reason why you come to that in the first place is because his existence challenges your identity. 